Welcome to Planetary Imaging, Registack 6 Wavelet tab, left side. In this video, I will quickly show you what I've learned about wavelet processing using Registack 6. The wavelet controls are on the left side of the wavelet screen. I've made another video where I describe some of the functions that are on the right side of this screen. In the other video, I also point out some quirks of Registacks. While running Registax, I open the 16-bit image that I got by stacking my movie file using AutoStacker. This takes me to this Wavelet tab. Then I fix the color using the RGB balance feature. To do that, I may also use the histogram as I explained in the other video. Then I do the Wavelets. I do the color correcting first because the Wavelet sharpening is highly subjective. We apply wavelets while looking at the image on the screen and asking ourselves, how's that? I figure I might as well be seeing the proper colors while doing that. It is also a good idea to make sure your image is not too dim while applying wavelets so you can see what you're doing. I often capture with a low histogram if it will allow me to get more frames. Then I select the normalize stack option in auto stacker so that the stacked image won't be too dim. If you didn't do that, then use the histogram to brighten your image, but remember to leave room for sharpening. As I explained in my histogram video, you don't want the histogram to reach all the way to the rightmost side. It may also be a good idea to leave the histogram up while sharpening. There are two options for a wavelet filter, default and Gaussian. It seems that everyone prefers the Gaussian option, but I'm going to start with the default option because it will help us understand the initial layer and step increment controls. When we select the default option, we lose the denoise and sharpen controls, which leave room to display these numbers here, which change when we play with the initial layer and step increment controls. The initial layer sets the number of the first slider. The increment is how much each slider is increased from the previous one. For example, setting the initial layer to 2 and the step increment to 3 we get 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17 for the values displayed by the sliders. We can see what these values mean by pressing and holding down the preview button for each slider. We get a red-green image. The green is what will become brighter when we use the slider, and the red becomes dimmer. Sharpening will be done over a larger, coarser scale with these sliders down here, which have larger values compared to these sliders with the smaller values. Notice though that when the step increment is zero and all the sliders have the same value that there is still some small difference between the sliders. Under wavelet scheme we have dyadic 2 to the n and linear. By selecting 2 to the n the initial layer and step increment controls become disabled and the slider values become 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 and the values in the initial layer and step increment control are ignored. As I said before, it seems that nobody uses the default wavelet filter, but instead use the Gaussian one. Now that we know what the initial layer, step increment, and 2 to the n versus linear controls do when using the default wavelet filter, we check to see if they behave the same when using the Gaussian filter. It seems to be identical except for one thing. As before, when selecting the dyadic 2 to the n option, the initial layer and step increment controls are disabled, yet the value of the step increment control does affect what we get. I find it best to make sure that the step increment is zero when using the 2 to the n option. Of course, you'll have to select the linear option to be able to set it to zero because the control is disabled otherwise. If you're going to be using the linear option, then notice how similar the sliders are when the step increment is zero. You should probably use a non-zero value for the step increment when using the linear option. The setting that I use, at least at the time of making this video, is zero for the step increment and I use the dyadic 2 to the n option. Don't feel that you have to use all six sliders. You may find that you only need to use two or three of the sliders, and which two or three you use may differ depending on how large your picture is. If you use a 3x drizzle, your image will be larger, and the two or three sliders you use will be these lower ones. I think the main reason that people prefer the Gaussian wavelet filter over the default one is because you get these denoise and sharpen controls. Registax doesn't come with much of a user manual, so we have to play around to see what happens. The purpose of the sliders is to sharpen the image, so what does the sharpen control do? 
I've come to think of them as gain multipliers for each slider, although I've noticed that it is not linear. Without using the sharpening controls, my sliders end up something like this. The bottom slider is extremely sensitive, and I need to only apply a small amount. The amount of slider needed increases as I go to the sliders above. I have maxed out slider 1 and wish I had more. Notice how there is very little difference between 0 and 100 for this slider. Now I will increase the sharpen value from 0.1 to 0.2 and that will amplify the effect of this slider. Now let's look at slider number 6. With the slider all the way to the right we have too much sharpening. Same for 50% and even for 25%. Now I decrease the sharpen value to 0.7 and it causes this slider to be much wimpier. This makes it easier to control the amount of sharpening I want. Notice that if you lower the sharpen value to 0.06, that the slider becomes so wimpy that you can't tell if it does anything at all. This is what I meant when I said if you think of this as a gain multiplier that it's not linear. Now I will bring up a previously saved solution where each slider has a different sharpen value. Notice how the sliders are all closer to the same value to get roughly the same image as before. Sharpening can cause noise which can be removed with the denoise control. There is a denoise control for each slider. As with the sharpening, the denoise control works on a finer scale on layer 1 and works on a more coarse scale as you go to the higher numbered layers. The effect is most noticeable on layer 1 and I often don't use denoise on the other layers. If I add a lot of sharpening on layer 1, you can see the noise. Then by applying some denoise, the noise goes away and much of the sharpening remains. There are a few more controls on the left side of the Wavelet tab. This automatic checkbox is in case you get a really fast computer in the future. Checking this box causes the Wavelet sharpening to be done continuously as you move the slider. Otherwise you have to let go of the mouse button to see what you will get. Also you can move the slider with the arrow keys on your keyboard and the change will not be seen unless automatic is checked. I prefer to leave it unchecked and to see what I get after moving the slider with the arrow keys I just press the do all button. Normally when you open a new file for processing the wavelet sliders are reset. Checking the hold wavelet settings checkbox will prevent this. If you're making an animation then you have several image files to process and you probably want the same wavelet sharpening to be applied to all of them so the animation doesn't flicker. You can use the hold wavelet setting checkbox but I prefer to use the Save Scheme and Load Scheme feature at the bottom here. The Hold Wavelet Setting checkbox won't save your work when you close Registax, but these Save Wavelet settings can be recalled any time. Finally, there is this Use Linked Wavelets checkbox. I don't know anything about this, so anything I would say about it would probably be harmful or useless at best. When you hover your cursor over it, you get this message. When active, Settings of higher wavelet layers will affect the next layer. This is the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more, then watch some of my other videos. There is a video on using the right side of the wavelet tab where I show you a few of the controls that I use. I made another video where I show you how to use AutoStacker to stack your planet movies. The Exposure, Gain, Etc. video explains how I use histograms to help me decide on my exposure and gain settings for capture. To get to the listing of all my videos on planetary imaging, click on the bottom right quadrant.